Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com. And in today's video, we're diving into the world of the Boya wireless lavalier microphone with its innovative charging case. And whether you're a budding YouTuber, a professional videographer, or just someone looking to elevate your audio game, you've likely faced the challenge of finding a reliable, high quality microphone that doesn't break the bank or complicate your setup. Well, the Boya wireless lavalier mic promises to deliver not just on sound quality, but also on ease of use, portability, and overall user experience. We're gonna dive into the specs, test out the sound quality in various environments, and I'll walk you through the setup process so you can see just how easy it is to get started with this microphone. So if you've been considering adding a wireless lavalier microphone to your audio arsenal, or if you're just curious about what makes the Boya mic stand out from the crowd, you're in the right place. Now, real quick, before we get started, if you get any value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Blog Within YouTube channel. Helps me bring you more resources and it keeps you up to date with all of the web and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's unbox this mic and see what it can do. First off, as always, I want to thank Boya for sending me this Boya Mic 3-in-1 microphone. I'm a huge fan of their products, but please know that I'm not biased. We're going to take a really close look at this mic to make sure it's worth your hard-earned money. Okay, so the packaging is nice and neat, which I appreciate. And out of the box, first we have the Quick Start Guide. There are a lot of helpful visuals in here to help you get started with the mic, so I highly recommend checking this out when you have some extra time as you're setting everything up. Next, we have the charging case that not only charges your mics and transmitter, but keeps your equipment safe and secure if you're on the go or need to travel to a location to shoot and record. As you can see, the case holds and charges both of your mics and receiver, as well as the type USB-C and lightning adapters, which we'll use in just a bit. There's also this great LED display on the front of the case letting you know the amount of power your unit has. And I'll show you how to charge it in a little bit, but overall, this charging case does a great job at keeping your equipment safe and ready to use. Next are the cables and the lavalier microphones. Here we have the charging cable for the case, the 3.5 millimeter TRS for connecting the transmitter to your camera, and then the two lavalier microphones. Remember, this unit comes with two built-in mics, which are the mics and the charging case, and then it also includes two lavalier mics as well. And I know it's all jumbled up in my hand right now, but we'll separate everything in just a bit so you can get a better idea of how this all connects and works. Okay, also included is this little carrying case. It has the Boya insignia and just a great way of keeping everything consolidated. And inside are the built-in mic windscreens and USB-A to USB-C adapter. This is for your charging cable if needed. And then the windscreens here snap onto each mic to help improve the quality of sound. And I'll show you how that works a little later on in the video. Next is the lavalier clamp and windscreen. Each lavalier mic comes with a clamp that helps you attach the mic to your clothes, and then the windscreen slips over the mic to help improve the sound quality. And I'll also show you how this all works in just a bit. All right, that's everything that comes in the box of the Boya Mic 3-in-1 wireless microphone, and you really do get a lot for your money. And speaking of the price, this is currently going for about $160 on Amazon, and I'll link to the product page in the video description below, but like I said, you really get a high quality wireless and portable mic setup for the price. Also, before we go through the setup, let me give you a quick overview of some of the features that I think are beneficial to content creators. For starters, the Boya mic offers studio quality sound with enhanced audio details, ideal for environments under 115 decibels. Its high definition capture accurately reproduces human voices and excels in high pitch settings. The transmitter and mic have eight gigabytes of memory and offer up to 15 hours of onboard recording. This means that whatever you record into the mic will be stored and you can then upload that audio to your computer. It's super helpful if you're recording on location and don't have a DAW or a digital recorder on hand. The charging case boasts up to 50 hours of battery life so you can record all day on a fully charged unit. You also get 300 meters or about 900 feet of operating range with the wireless mics. This is perfect for long distance shooting and recording. Additionally, the mics 3-in-1 compatibility simply plug into an Apple, Android, iPhones, cameras, or computers without any issues or learning curves. And there are also three output modes, mono, stereo, and safety track, catering to diverse post-production needs for a comprehensive recording experience. All right, so those are just some of the features of this mic. 
Next, let's go over how to connect and use the Boya Mic 3-in-1 wireless microphone. So first things first, you may need to charge your mic before you use it. Again, if I close the case, you'll see the power meter display on the front of the case. There are four dots, and when all four are lit up, that means everything is fully charged. If you're not seeing any lights here, then you'll need to connect the USB-C side of the charging cable to the back of the unit. There will be a port located there. And then to start charging, you'll plug in the USB-A side of the cable into your power source. I'm charging it in a wall socket that has USB-A ports for charging devices, but you can use whatever is most convenient for you. Also, if your power source uses a USB-C port, you can attach the USB-C adapter, and that will give you the ability to charge via a USB-C port. Just FYI. Now one thing I'm going to point out is that in order for your mics and receiver to charge, you'll need to make sure that they can actually connect to the charging port within the case. And when you first purchase the mic, if you take it out of the case, you'll see the plastic protector that Boya has over the charging connector. And what you'll do here is just peel it off, and that way when you place the mic back into the slot within the case, it will now charge. And you'll want to be sure and do that for the other mic and the receiver as well. Also, once the transmitter has been successfully connected to the charging case, you'll see that it has this battery icon display letting you know its battery life. And then you'll also notice that the mics are lit up red as well. The static red light indicates that the mics are charging. And I should point out that after we pair the mics with the receiver, this battery life display will change and will show the battery life for both the receiver and the mics. All right, moving on next, let's take a closer look at the built-in mics that come with the case. So these little guys are what Boya refers to as the built-in mics. And if we look on the side of the mic, you'll see three buttons. The top black button is the power and mute button. Press and hold that for two seconds to power the mic on and off, and press it for one second to mute or unmute the mic. Below that is the blue button, and this is the noise cancellation feature. Pressing this will help block out background noise during your recordings. And then finally, that red button, Pressing this will allow you to record via the onboarding recording feature. This means that whatever you record will be stored in the mic and you can then upload that audio to your computer, which we'll do a little later on in the video. Okay, moving on to the other side of the mic. We have the mic line input toggle and flipping that little switch lets you determine which input jack will feed the console. Below that is the USB-C charging port. This can obviously be used to charge the mic, but can also be used to read the recording files after connecting it to a laptop, iPad, or smartphone, which we'll do a little later on. Then on top of the mic is the 3.5 millimeter TRS input. This is where you'll plug in the lavalier mic. Next to that is the built-in mic capsule. This is the actual microphone and is also where you can connect that little puffy windscreen. You'll also notice the flashing blue light here. There are actually two lights on the mic. One is the recording indicator and the other is the status indicator. It's currently bleaking blue, which means the mic is unpaired. But to give you a better idea of what each light and status means, I've linked to the Boya Mic user manual in the video description below. And again, here you'll find a detailed description of each status indicator and what they mean. It was super helpful to me when I was starting out with the mic, so I highly recommend giving this a read whenever you have some extra time. Okay, next, if you look on the back of the mic, you'll see the clip and magnet. The clip allows you to attach the mic to your clothes or anywhere you see fit. And if you don't want to use the clip, they've also included this magnet that lets you attach the mic without using the clip. It's super strong, as you can see, so it does a great job of staying in place, which I'll show you how it works a little later on in the video. All right, moving on to the receiver. This too has a clip so you can attach it to your device or camera. There's also a digital screen on the top of the unit. By default, it will show the home screen where you'll see the power and mic statuses as well as your audio levels. This is also where you'll configure your settings and pair your mics, which I'll walk you through in a few minutes. Moving on to the bottom of the receiver, we have the charging connector as well as the USB-C port. And in the middle there, this is where you can connect the USB-C or iOS lightning adapters. This obviously lets you connect to USB-C compatible devices and iOS mobile phones. Again, the user manual linked in the video description below does a great job of walking you through that process. I'll also be showing you how this all connects in the video, but again, I highly recommend checking out the user manual whenever you get a chance. Okay, on the side of the receiver are the power button and M button. I'm holding the receiver upside down so the M button looks like the W button, but regardless, the M button lets you cycle through the settings menu and the power button turns the receiver on and off. 
Then on the other side of the mic, we have two 3.5 millimeter TRS ports. One is for headphones so that you can monitor the audio in real time and the other is the out port. This is for the analog audio output to a camera, mixer, recorder, etc. Finally, we have the two adapters. This includes the lightning adapter, which lets you connect the receiver to an iOS device, and then the USB-C adapter, which lets you connect to Android smartphones, tablets, computers, and other USB-C devices. And let me show you how that's done. So on the bottom of the receiver, simply remove the rubber protector. It slides right off, and you'll see the connecting contacts this is where you'll slide the desired adapter in place. So first, I'll connect the lightning adapter. Simply slide it in like so, and you can now connect the receiver to an iOS device. Then to remove the adapter, just pull it out. And then the same thing goes for the USB-C adapter. Simply slide it in place, and you can now connect the receiver to a USB-C compatible device. All right, that's gonna do it for the three-in-one wireless mic and receiver overview. Next, let's go through the settings and pair the mics so that we can begin recording. Okay, so what you'll do here is from the home screen, press the M button on the side of the transmitter to access the menu page. And the first setting on the menu page is the output mode. It's currently set to stereo, but if you wanna change any of these settings, press and hold the M button on the side and that will highlight the actual setting and then press the M button again and you can filter through the different settings. Then once you've selected your setting, press and hold the M button again, and this saves the settings. Then to move on to the other sections of the menu, click the M button once each time, and this lets you move through the menu. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through each of these settings, but once you get familiar with your setup and gear, you can revisit this menu and configure the settings to your liking. All right, next let's pair the mic to the transmitter so that we can begin recording audio. So I actually already paired the mics to this transmitter when I was testing everything out, but I'll reset it so that you could see how to pair your mic whenever you first get it. And really quick, if we take a look at the transmitter, you'll see that the two blue lights at the top there, they are static, meaning that they aren't blinking. And this means that the mic is paired. And if we take the mic out, you'll see that it also has a blue static light on top indicating that it's paired with the transmitter. However, if we turn the mic off, by pressing and holding the power button on the side of the mic for five seconds, you'll see the mic unpairs and the blue light on the transmitter starts blinking. This is probably what your transmitter will be doing when you first get your mic. So to pair the two, on the side of the transmitter, press the M button once to access the settings menu, and then keep pressing it until you get to the pairing settings. It'll take you about 10 or 11 clicks. Then from here, press and hold the M button on the side of the transmitter for a few seconds. And when you see the highlighted answer, that means you can edit it. So to change it from no to yes, simply click the M button again. And there we go. Then press and hold the M button for a few seconds and you'll see the pairing mode initiate. Then to pair the mic, simply turn it on by pressing and holding the power button for a few seconds on the side of the microphone. And voila, we get the pair successful message on the transmitter and both blue lights are static, meaning that the mic is now paired with the transmitter and we can begin recording. Okay, next I wanna quickly go over how to attach the fluffy windscreen to the built-in mic. So if you look closely at the bottom of the windscreen, you'll see the attachment piece. It's this little plastic circle with the notches in it. You'll line those notches up on the mic located here at the top and this took me a few tries when I first started using the mic, but as you get used to it, it becomes easier to attach and detach. And there we go. Just like that, we can now improve the quality of sound if we're recording in windy elements. Then to remove it, simply give it a little turn, and this lets you detach the windscreen if you need to. All right, moving on. Next, let me show you how to connect the transmitter to a camera. So for this example, I'm going to attach the transmitter to my Nikon DSLR camera. This will essentially allow me to capture audio from my wireless mic and sync it in with the video being recorded by the camera. And it's super easy to set up. All you're gonna do is use the clip on the transmitter to secure it to the camera, then connect the two with the cable that came with the Boya mic. So first things first, I'm gonna plug the cable into the out port and the side of the transmitter. Then to attach it to the camera, simply use the clip and slide it into the hot shoe located on top of the camera. 
Most cameras should have a hot shoe like this. If not, you may need to get creative. And finally, plug the other end of the cable into the mic port on the camera. And then not shown here are the camera audio settings. You may need to go into the camera settings and configure the audio so that it uses the mic and transmitter, but this camera automatically switches the audio input, so I'm good to go. All right, next, let me show you some different ways you can attach the mic to your clothes when recording. So one cool thing I love about this mic is the magnet. It'll be located on the back of the clip, but all you'll do is separate the two like so, and then you'll be able to use the magnet to place the mic basically anywhere, which I'll show you in a few seconds. You can also use the clip by itself to clip onto your collar or hat or whatever, but both options give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to your setup and how you want to capture sound. And let me show you what I mean. So first, the magnetic clip. Now, I've already separated the magnet from the clip, so all you'll do here is place the mic where you want it to be located, and I'm gonna place it in the middle of my chest, and then I'll place the magnet on the other side of my shirt, and attach the two, and the mic stays in place. This can come in handy if you don't have a collar to attach the clip to, or if you need to place the mic in a specific location due to various situations. The magnet is strong, and the mic does a great job at staying in place. Next, if you want to just use the clip by itself, it's a pretty straightforward setup. Just clip it on your collar and you're good to go. Again, this does a great job at staying in place and it looks pretty cool. I love the aesthetics of these built-in mics. Okay, next, let's take a look at the lavalier mic. So this is a little different in that you have to connect the lavalier mic with the cable, which looks like this. And then you have to attach the windscreen to the mic as well but it's super easy to do. So first, to attach the windscreen, simply slide it over the mic like so. It may take a little convincing, but you'll wanna make sure it's completely covered. It'll look like this when you're done. Next, you'll plug the 3.5 millimeter jack into the mic, and this is pretty straightforward as well. Just plug it into the TRS port like so. Perfect. Next, we'll attach the clamp so that we can clip this mic onto our subject. And the clamp will look like this. All you'll do is take the clamp out of that plastic baggie, and then there will be this little circular connector. That is what you'll use to connect to the mic. And you'll just place that connector around the base of the mic like so, and voila. We can now connect this mic to our subject. And let me show you how that's done. So for this example, I'm just clamping the lavalier mic onto my collar. And then I'll clip the mic base to my pants pocket. And I realize that the wire is exposed. You could weave it under your shirt or find another way to position it. But either way, this is how you can attach the lavalier mic to your subject to begin recording. Okay, moving on. Next, let's go over how to connect the transmitter to an iOS device so that you could use the wireless mic with an iPhone. So if you recall, the mic comes with both lightning and USB-C adapters. And since I'm using an iPhone in this example, I'll need the lightning adapter, which looks like this. Then on the bottom of the transmitter, simply remove the little rubber protector, and then slide the adapter in place like so. Now we can plug it into an iPhone. And this too is pretty straightforward. Just plug the lightning adapter into the device, and you can now use the paired mic to record audio. It looks pretty cool too, I must say. Okay, next, let's test out the two mics when hooked up to my iPhone. All right, so here I am testing out the wireless Boya mic with the iPhone adapter. Got the lightning adapter, so we're able to hook this up to my iPhone. I'm also using the voice memo to record the audio. However, instead of the mic inside the iPhone, we're recording the audio through this Boya wireless mic. So we're getting studio quality audio with this setup. And again, I could also put my phone farther away out of distance, but uh, I'm just holding it on for the sake of this video, but you'd still be able to get some really good quality audio um, without holding on the phone. But this gives you a wireless option. And let me real quick test out the noise reduction feature. Now, I don't have too much background noise going on, but if you're out in the field or out in the wild and you're, you're recording and there's a lot of background noise, the noise reduction feature is a must have. And all you do is press this blue button once on the side, and you get the noise reduction icon that shows up on the unit. 
And again, this will block out background noise. I don't have much going on right now. Hopefully you could still tell, but again, it's a must have feature if you're out there in the wild recording audio. But I'm super happy with the setup. I'm super happy with the quality of sound, but let's keep testing it out. Okay, now we're testing the lavalier mic. This obviously isn't wireless per se, but we're still hooked up wirelessly to the iPhone with the lightning adapter. I'm still using the voice memo to record this audio. And due to the position of the mic, the loudness of the lavalier mic might be a little different than the wireless. However, you could adjust this and, and, get, and still get a really good quality of sound from this little microphone. But this just gives you another option for your recordings if uh, you need some setup like this. But again, really happy with the quality, really happy with the, the setup. And remember, took to the shirt with that little clamp and the lavalier mic. And we plug the line in here, this little jack, and then you can just clip this on anywhere, on your clothes, bag, what have you. But again, great setup, really happy with it. Finally, I wanna quickly go over the onboard recording feature. This basically lets you capture and save your audio recordings within the mic, which you can then upload onto your computer. And it's super easy to do. So first, to turn the onboarding recording on, simply press the red button once, and when you see the red light on the mic, this means that it's recording and storing your audio in the mic. Then when you're done, you'll press the red button again, and that stops the recording and will allow you to upload that audio to your computer. And the way to do that is with the cable provided within your set. It'll look like this. And all you'll do here is plug the USB-C side of that cable into the mic like so. And then since I'm connecting to a Mac, I'll need to use the USB-C adapter that came with the mic. And you'll just attach it to the USB-A side of the cable. And this will allow you to plug it into a USB-C port on a MacBook Pro, which is what I'm using. And again, pretty straightforward, just plug into the Mac and you can then access the audio files that were recorded via the onboarding feature. All right, so that's gonna do it for the Boya Mic 3-in-1 wireless microphone review and setup. Overall, I was impressed with the quality and everything that came with the set. I honestly think it's a great deal for $160, and I also think it stands up to my $600 Sennheiser wireless mics. So again, if you're in the market for a wireless microphone setup, I have no problem recommending the Boya Mic 3-in-1 wireless microphone. So visit the Amazon link in the video description below to get yours today. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're thinking about starting a blog, you gotta check out my step-by-step -step tutorials. They'll show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize a professional WordPress blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.